All right, so remember, we're only talking about the setup for the functions. Once we get to the function, uh, then we already hopefully know how to play with those. So on four, we've got a farmer. He's got 750 feet of fencing, wants to enclose a rectangular area, divided into four pens with fencing parallel to one side of the rectangle. What's the largest possible total area of the four pens? If you try to draw this out, to maybe understand a little bit better how to assign variables. Okay, we're talking about this rectangular pen. He's got 750 feet of fencing to play with. Apparently he's going to divide it into four parts. And as he divides it into four parts, how he divides it, all that fencing is going to run parallel to one another. So it'd probably have to look something like this. Now we don't know if the spacing is equal um, but quite honestly, it doesn't matter. If you start assigning variables to this, understanding that with where we ultimately want to go, we want to find a function that deals with the area. So a of x needs to equal something here. How we find area of a rectangle, we take a base times a height, right? So it would make sense to assign an x to the base and maybe a y to the height. All right, so we assign the variables. We know area is base times height. If base is x, height is y, our area function is going to be x times y. We don't want to function in terms of two variables, so this is where having another equation comes into play. For the other equation, well, let's go back to that amount of fencing we know. We know we have 750 feet of fencing to play with. So if these are my dimensions for the pen over here, Basically, I'm going to have two x's, right? And I'm going to have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five y's. That combination put together is going to give me all the fencing. That needs to add up to 750. So we come up with another equation to play with based off of some specific value usually. And then, as we saw yesterday, we solve for y. And by solving for y, we'll be able to take whatever y is and plug it in for our function. So solving for y here, subtract the 2x over, divide by 5. If I leave it like that, at least for the time being, I could take what y is here, and I could substitute in right there. That would give me a function a of x in terms of one variable x. Which if we uh, try to simplify that a little bit, you could uh, distribute your x through. And as you distribute the x through, understanding this is basically x over 1, right? I'm distributing through the top. Distributing through the top, I'd have 750x, right? And since that's over 5, I could divide by 5. So it would be 750 divided by 5, which is 150 with that x. And then if I take that x, distribute to the uh, minus 2x, I'd have minus 2x squared over 5. So if I take that uh, term, divide by 5, would be 2 divided by 5, my 2 fifths x squared. So there's the setup. Now to actually go through and find your maximum area, this is where you got to use the derivative. Oh, yeah, we're taking 750 divided by 5. So you're going to go through, find your derivative, um, your set things equal to 0, your solve for x, right, and that'll take you the rest of the way through goal here was just to understand the setup. So how are we doing on the setup? All right, number five, we've got uh, 1,200 square centimeters of material that's available to make a box with a square base and an open top. We have to find the largest possible volume of the box. All right, so if I draw that out, draw out my box, Try to assign some variables to the different side lengths. 
one of the things that stands out to me here is that we've got a, a square base, right? So if I start assigning variables and I stick with the uh, X and Y theme, if I let this little edge here be X, then that means this side over here would have to be X, right? Because that's all part of the base, it's a square. All the sides have to be the same. And it doesn't specify anything about the height, so we don't know if the height's the same. We'll have to let that be a different variable. We could let that be our Y. All right, so what's in question here? We're trying to find the largest possible volume of the box, so we need a function um, that connects to volume somehow. Choose V of X for my function notation here. You know, how do you find the volume of a box? Well, you take the length times the width times the height, right? So you're going to take basically X times X times Y. X squared Y. So like the last one, you know, it would be nice to have everything in terms of one variable X. I'd like to be able to replace that Y somehow. Let's see if we can set up an equation based on a the given values here, and the given value that we have is 1,200 square centimeters to play with. So we need to set something equal to 1,200. When we talk about square centimeters, we're talking about an area, right? If we're talking about cubic centimeters, that'd be the volume. But this is going to be the area side. So if you take into consideration the uh, amount of surface area that's being covered by this box, we've got a square base down here where if we found the area of that, just take your base times your height or your length times your width, it'd be x squared, right? And there's just that one base. So x squared, we'd have to add on to, and we'd have to add on to the area for all the sides. So we got four sides because we know the top's open, right? Don't have to worry about that. Uh, with four sides, the area of those four sides are all going to be the same. Right, it's all going to be x times y. So since you have four of those, if we tack that on to the area of the base, that would give us that 1,200 square centimeters we can play with. So I'm trying to replace the y in the function that I've set up. So if I solve for y up here with this new equation, I've got 1,200 minus x squared divide by 4x all the way through, we've got 1,200 minus x squared over 4x. So I can take this, I can plug in down here. Now if you got a little lost on the distribution on the last one, let me see if I can uh, show this to you a slightly different way and you can just choose which one works best for you. You know it's x squared times y. Now, if I start to simplify down this y expression that I got, you've got 1,200 over 4, right? We could divide that out. That'd be 300. But we also need to consider the x here, so we've got to divide by x while we're doing that. OK, and then we could just subtract x. Well, not just x. What else? Okay, we need to have a 4 on the bottom, right? Got to have 4 in the denominator. Because if we're going to take this x squared, divide by 4x, uh, yeah, it'd be x squared over x, which is just x, but then you'd have that 4 in the denominator. So you can plug in like we did on the last one and then distribute. Or if you want to simplify what you got there a little bit by just dividing some stuff out, you can plug it in that way. Now I need to distribute. As I distribute, I understand that that x squared is over 1. So my function for v of x, it's going to be x squared times 300 all over x, right? So the x squared and the x will cancel. I'll be left with 300x minus, you've got x squared times x over here, so x cubed all over 4. So I could write x cubed over 4, or I could understand that that's just 1 fourth of x cubed. Why do I like to bring that down? 
Well, if you think about taking a derivative in the next step, if I write it like this, it makes it a lot easier. I mean, if I leave that x cube on top, knowing how we think sometimes, you know, sometimes we might want to, I don't know, use a quotient rule there, and that's just way too much work. Well, you still get the right answer. Well, hopefully, if you do everything right, you still get the right answer, yeah.